Oh yeah, take that Charlie. Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here, Moss Pond and Gun. We have another gun review for you today. Very obscure rifle, as you guys know, we've been known to, uh, to deal with a couple of obscure guns on our channel. This is a uh, Robinson Armament uh, M96. It's basically a modern uh, semi-auto copy of the Stoner 63. Now, uh, for those of you that aren't old enough to remember or weren't there or just don't know about it, uh, the Stoner 63 was used extensively by the Navy SEALs in Vietnam. Uh, it was a very modern gun for its age. It was a, really the first modular service rifle ever, to my knowledge. And uh, it was very well favored and very well liked by the men that used them in combat. Um, it is a Stoner design. Eugene Stoner designed the Stoner 63. It was uh, kind of one of his brain children. Um, this, of course, is not a full auto variant, but it is a uh, modern reproduction of the same gun. Uh, none of the parts are interchangeable with the original 63. Now, if you guys know about values on Stoner 63s, they are very expensive. There are some uh, collectors out there that collect Stoner 63s, and the guns can bring anywhere from $125,000 to $160,000 a piece uh, because a lot of them were destroyed after the war. Uh, they came home from Vietnam and a lot of the, uh, the, the government, for some reason, decided to scrap them. They destroyed a lot of the original Stoner 63s. So Robinson might sound like a, uh, an interesting company to you. You may be familiar with their XCR. That's kind of one of their takes on a modern service rifle, sporting rifle. Um, I don't have one of those to show you, but that is one of the things that Robinson is known for. Um, sadly, they do not make this gun anymore. I wish they still supported it, but Robinson, as at the time of this video, uh, they do not have parts, service, or support for this rifle anymore. If you email them about it, they'll ignore you because they, they don't service them anymore. Uh, they didn't really make a ton of these things. I want to say that total production is only around 9,000 units. Uh, the gun you see here uses a 20-inch barrel. Uh, this is what they call the expeditionary rifle. All right. And uh, this is their, you know, full-size 20-inch barrel. They offered it in a 16 and a half called the Recon, and they offered it in a 17 and a half. It didn't really have any kind of a special name. They had the Recon and then the one you see here. Also, they had a Bren gun feed <coughs> sight system that they offered with the gun. Now, the original Stoner 63, when I mentioned that it's a modular gun, what I mean by modular is they actually had a belt-fed conversion kit for this gun. If you see a lot of photos of Navy SEALs, you'll see them armed with Stoner 63s, and some of them have big drums hanging off the side, with, and they're belt-fed. Now, Robinson never got around to making a belt feed kit for this gun, but they did make the Bren feed kit. This whole system on the bottom is modular. You drop these two pins, and you can change the feed system around uh, for just about anything you want. Uh, it does have a quick change barrel feature. Uh, you, the fore end comes off very easily. There's a little plunger, and the barrel pops right off. Okay, very, very unique system. It is a piston gun. Uh, in my opinion, I think everyone in Vietnam should have been armed with this gun. If they were going to use something in 5.56, uh, this really should have been the, the one they used. Uh, but anyway, we're going to run it with iron sights. This gun does have a Picatinny rail on top. Uh, I don't believe they had Picatinny rails on the originals, obviously, but it is one feature they have that's a little more modern is having the rail. We're going to shoot the gun some, just iron sights. I didn't want to, you know, tarnish the, the beauty of the original gun by putting an optic on it, so we're going to run it with irons. All right, I'm feeding it from a 20-round Colt box magazine, and we're just running some Wolf 55 grain, just cheap ammo. Non-reciprocating charging handle. Very, very unique rifle. All right, we're going to shoot it out in about 300 yards with irons here, just to do a little bit of playing around.
This magazine here is a little bit of a throwback. Uh, by the way, this gun does take standard AR-15 magazines. This particular mag I brought home from Iraq. Uh, don't tell Uncle Sam I stole it. Stole it. <laughs> All right. Guys, this gun shoots so good. The recoil impulse is very, very smooth. The trigger, pretty respectable. The uh, safety itself is in a very intuitive location that's simple to get to. The furniture is very comfortable. Um, and one thing I've always liked about this gun too is it, it kind of has the feel of like a little baby M60. When you look at the vents and the way the forend's designed, it, it just reminds me a little mini M60, which is something I've always felt was kind of a charm about the Stoner 63. We're going to shoot it a little bit more, but it's running real nice. Oh yeah. Out. All right, guys, one thing that I didn't mention about the gun also, what I think is really neat about Robinson's, uh, you know, reproduction of the gun is that all of the metal surfaces on this gun are stainless steel and they're melanited. Very, very rugged finish, very impervious to rust. All uh, the barrel is parkerized but all the other metal, metal surfaces are actually made out of stainless steel and melanided, which I always thought was a very interesting feature um, about this particular gun. Guys, they are very well-made guns. If you ever happen to come across one and you want to, you know, they're going to be a little bit on the expensive side. Um, they are very much worth the money. They're awesome guns. Uh, we're going to load up some more magazines and uh, have a little bit more of a go on the gun, a little bit more, maybe at longer range. I think we're going to back off to 440, and then Chad and I are going to have a go on it here. Um, you know, I do want to thank uh, the people up at Blyce's uh, Sporting Goods, uh, Blyce's Gun Shop, and also uh, Tim at Military Arms Channel with this place, Copper Customs, up there. Uh, we were up there visiting Copper Customs and, you know, Tim over at Military Arms Channel, and uh, went up there and I saw this rifle on the wall, and uh, I had to have it. I grabbed it off the wall, and Tim's like, you serious? You're going to buy it? I'm like, yeah. So uh, I did purchase this gun from Copper Customs uh, slash Blyce's up there in uh, Indiana. If you uh, happen to ever be in their direction, go check them out. They're good people. They'll take care of you. Uh, they'll hook you up with anything you need. Uh, so anyway, we're going to back off to the top of the hill, and uh, so far the little gun is working awesomely with iron sights, making very short work of all that stuff out there to 300 yards. Now guys, remember, jungle combat, uh, you know, Navy SEALs digging around in the jungles of Vietnam, they wouldn't have been shooting probably over 100 yards anyway. At 100 yards, I was making short work of that gong, just wrapping them out. This would have been a just wonderful gun to have in a combat situation. I tell you what, I, I would have carried one in Iraq if they would have handed me one. This is just a great little gun. Um, good sight radius, generous sight radius, uh, very pointable, just a, a wonderful firearm. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna back up here, make it happen. All right guys, with a little Robinson M96, we're doing pretty good down there at the bottom, out to about 300 yards. We're gonna take a few shots at 440 now. I mean, this 5.56, it carries out there pretty well, but it sounds kind of like a little mouse fart when it gets uh, all the way out there to 440 and dings that gong. So you really gotta listen out for it. But we've got 30 shots in here, well actually 28, you know, metal mags. Let's see what we can do here. It should steam on out there pretty well. Whenever you're ready, send it. All right. Just off the right edge of the plate by about an inch. Okay. Good. Off the right edge of the plate, about three inches.
All right, the, look, the wind is catching you. We got a really strong crosswind blowing from our left. Got it. Bring your hold over about uh, five or six inches. So about a minute and a yeah. half. All right, now you're hitting off the left edge of the plate. I think the wind is just really blowing those little bullets around. Yeah, we got a little bit of a storm front moving through and wind's really picking that little 556 five, projectile up. All right. Let's see here. Split the difference, go back to the right. All right, you're off the left edge of the plate about an inch. You're bare. All right, you're down in the, you're gonna have to bring your hold up a bit. You're just off. You're shooting just under it, it looks like. Oh, I hit it that time. I could hear it. Oh, okay. That wind is just really whipping yeah, that little Yeah, I know, man. Around. You can't even hardly uh, hear it when, it when it hits either. Yep. That wind really blows that little uh, 55 grainer around like crazy. Send it when you're ready. Just high and left look like. There you go. All good. Just high. Good. Just high and right. Good. 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 You're on it. Those two were just off the left. Woo, high left. Off the left side. Just good. 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 Just the chain. Same place. Well guys, little gun's not shooting too horrible. Uh, what I will probably do, I do own this rifle, uh, what we'll probably do is end up scoping the little guy since we do have a provision for some type of a, a scope, obviously. Uh, we'll scope it, do a little bit more accuracy work with it. Unfortunately, the guns aren't really available commercially anymore like they used to be. You're gonna have to find them on the used market if they are even out there at all. Uh, I know they didn't make a ton of them. I'm hoping that maybe videos like this will pressure uh, Robinson Armament into maybe reproducing the gun again. They really need to because it's a very uh, historically important rifle. And I think that there is a big market for things like this. Um, you've got stuff like the Colt SP1s that are out there. You've got the Daewoo DR200s. Two, uh, uh, a lot of the old school, long sight radius, iron sighted rifles. You know, a lot of M16A2s are out there with iron sights and carry handles. And for me, I've always been kind of an iron sight guy. And that's one of the, the things that drew me to this rifle was, you know, I liked uh, the nice clean look of it, the iron sights, the historical importance of the gun. So uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Little gun's not shooting bad. Really appreciate your support for the channel. Uh, we've been working very hard to get out uh, pertinent and fun videos to you guys. You have a request of a certain gun you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, we'll do what we can to accommodate it if it's something we have access to. Uh, guys, we appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.